I think there's no doubt that the pen drawer is a very cool machine, although it also comes with a few problems here and there. For example, the dust collection. This is the mess that's been created by just cutting this small joint here. And of course, I have the dust collection attachment, but unfortunately, my shop vac hose doesn't fit. And also, it's quite big and really isn't ideal for this job here. And it also creates shavings that have quite a lot of volume and will fill up the shop vac very fast, so I would have to constantly empty it when using it. That wouldn't be that big of a deal, but I would rather prefer something that's quicker and simpler to empty. So to fix these problems I want to build sort of a shop vac dust collector dedicated for the pen router and it will eventually sit on a cart where also the pen router will sit on. So then it will be permanently attached to the pen router and I will never have to worry about dust collection for it again. Therefore I picked up this little ash vacuum from a hardware store and cool about this is that it's a really nice and compact little unit. It has a HEPA filter, a hose that I probably won't use, another attachment and a nice steel bucket with latches already attached. And I also picked up a little sheet of 2mm polycarbonate with which I want to build a cyclone separator to go between the motor unit and the bucket. I picked this idea up from a video by Cosmos, which I've linked to in the video description. Then I used his idea and designed something to fit around the vacuum I bought. Once done, the build began. But before we get started, there's one thing you really need to do when you get one of these in your hands. To begin with, I let my CNC cut three circles into this piece of plywood. If I didn't have a CNC, then this would be an easy task for a router with a circle jig. And next I'll cut the outer and the inner circle off of it. This ring should now fit onto the motor unit, but there's this valve here that I need to cut a recess for. This hole saw has a about the right diameter. I also had to remove a little bit more material on the other side and chamfer the edge to clear some of the screws and the ceiling, but now it fits pretty good. I've also already drilled the six mounting holes which I can now transfer and drill through the motor assembly. Alright, now making the other two rings. And I can cut both of them from one piece. The small disc I sanded until it had the exact same size as this one here. And the bigger ring I need to glue back together and therefore I cut a little strip that has the width of the bandsaw curve and I need to glue that in now. While the glue is drying I can cut the sheet of polycarbonate to size. Now I need to get the ring to fit inside the bucket and make it work with these latches. Therefore I need to cut a groove all around the circle and the easiest way to do that would be with such a rabbiting router bit. But this one is the only one I have and it's a little too big and would cut too deep. So I had to come up with another setup. And all I did was screwing two bearings to a scrap board and with these I can easily rotate the ring and then push it into a router bit, clamp it down and then just cut around it. Okay, now that it fits, I can raise the bit and cut the groove a little deeper. Now it still doesn't really work because of the shape of these latches, they kind of hook into the bucket and that's a little problem. But it's not too bad, I can just pull these pieces out and bend them to another shape. 
They are a little loose now, but I think if I put a wooden peg right here, then this should work pretty good. And now comes the non-fun part for me and probably the fun part for you. When you're watching me, how I struggle trying to get this wrapped inside this ring. And I have to do this multiple times because the polycarbonate doesn't have the right length yet. But that was uh, much simpler than I expected it. Now it fits inside this ring, but actually should fit tight around this here because otherwise it won't fit into this slot which has the same size as this circle. So therefore I need to cut it a little bit shorter again. Okay, now it's at the final length, which is also length that I calculated it should have. And it fits perfectly. In the end this ring will end up all the way down and this one will be right about here and therefore I don't need to drill all the screw holes. The screw holes need to be 10.6 centimeters from the bottom edge. To mark a straight line I can use the off cut. Now to spread 15 holes evenly I need to space them by this increment. Okay, our holes are drilled and I also drilled and countersunk a few more at the edge and you will see in a minute why I need them. Now back at this date I need to bring this disc to the screw hole positions and therefore I made these spacer pieces where I can put all of this on there and then push the disc down and now it's at the correct position. And then it's just a matter of pre-drilling and screwing. No problem that you can see that even with it being attached securely here and here it just doesn't want to stay closed in shape along here so I need to force it into shape and that's why I drilled all these holes for. With these I can now screw a piece of wood there and this will keep it in shape. I also cut a shallow cove into this piece just with the table saw blade which has the same diameter as the cyclone. Clamped it with a band clamp and that shall hold it in place until the screws are installed. This now holds the top section in place and I could do the same for the lower section but the inlet chute also needs a place to go and to avoid drilling another hole for the inlet I just make the inlet over the seam here and then the inlet holds this in shape and I've avoided drilling another hole. For the inlet pipe I bought a piece of draining pipe and cut a few pieces of wood to make a housing around it. This housing I first just glued together without joinery and half an hour later the glue had set and I could drill some holes to reinforce everything with dowels. I've used this method several times now and it's a really simple way for strong joints if it doesn't matter that you can see them. Now to cut the round shape into here, I line it up with the top part by eye and then mark that on the bottom. In the past I also used a circle jig setup for this cut, but cutting freehand very carefully and sanding afterwards worked just as well and was quicker. Well, a small plan changes because as I was trying to figure out how to mount this here and bring it into shape at the same time, I more and more realized it would be just too difficult. So I now also installed a block here that brings it into shape and now we'll have much less trouble installing this piece here. With the help of a light I can locate the screw hole positions. And I marked them just by eye. The inlet pipe also needs this curvature and I can use its housing as a cutting guide. And with this I now know the shape of the hole that I need to cut into here. I remove the majority with a multi-tool, then closer to the line with the Dremel and the final shape by hand with a file. I need to get the center hole into this piece. This hole also needs to precisely fit the pipe, but how to do that? Now I can get started with a hole saw and to get it then to the right size I can use the same router jig as in the beginning. An excellent tight fit. This is going to be my baffle, just a disc and the plug that fits precisely into the pipe. 
Now I just glue them together. And because both of them have a center hole, I can use a screw to clamp this. Later I replace the screw with a dowel. And while the glue on this is drying, I can attach the ring that mounts to the bucket. I also need to plug this hole in the bucket. And therefore I'm using a leftover piece of the polycarbonate. And finally I need to cut the slot into this pipe and to do that safely I'm going to put it into the housing of the inlet pipe and clamp it there. And like so I can now cut the slot on the table saw. Now before the final assembly I painted and varnished all the parts and now comes the moment that we've all been waiting for. To make sure that I can't pull out this pipe here by accident, I just put a screw right here and the tip of the screw will grab into the plastic and hold it in place. Yeah, now it's secure. The baffle goes in so that the slot and the pipe faces away from this pipe, so right about in this position. And the pipe fits in there so tightly that I think a friction fit is enough for this. Before I can try it out, I still need to do the most important part, which is sealing it. Because as you can see here, there's a slight gap and there are a lot more gaps which all need to be filled to make it airtight. Therefore, I'm using transparent silicone and after 24 hours, it's cured and everything's finished. The fact that I can block the inlet and then this valve opens up tells me that I have no leaks and everything is airtight and also nothing collapses. These walls, now that they are around, are really strong. So yeah, let's try it out. This little vacuum also came with this steel pipe that's supposed to fit the hose that came with it. But it conveniently also fits into regular vacuum hoses. But the best thing is that it also fits into the dust collection port of the pantry router. So it was quite simple to make the hose fit on there. So now, time to try it out. Okay, mortise is cut and there's pretty much no dust around the machine. So let's look inside the bucket. So this is the amount of dust and chips that was created by this one mortise. Quite a lot, but as I said in the beginning, these are chips with a lot of volume. And everything around the filter looks pretty clean, so the cyclone works. Now I will use it for the pantry router only, but it could be also used for any other shop vac task. So let's see how it does sucking up some shavings around the lathe. Well, no surprise, it can do that as well. So yeah, in conclusion, a successful project that also didn't cost me that much. I paid 40 euros for this little ash vacuum and about 10 euros for the sheet of polycarbonate. Wood and screws and stuff I already had on hand. 
And what I really like about it is how small it still is, even being a full shop vac with a cyclone separator. And it also needs to be that small because next would be to connect this vacuum with the pan router. And I'll do that by building a cart and I'll do that in my next video. Now, if you already watched my videos for a little bit longer and kept attention to this one, you've maybe noticed that I was wearing a new pair of safety glasses in this one. And that's cool because this one was sponsored or more given to me as a present from a very kind viewer through my Amazon wishlist. This will definitely get used and is probably a little bit easier to find on a cluttered workbench than my old one. So yeah, thanks for that. And I've also linked to my Amazon wishlist in the video description. Hmm. Hmm. I think that's enough eye protection. So it will be permanently attached to the pen router and I'll never have to worry about dust collection for it anymore. Uh, again. Oh. And so it will be always part of... No. Uh. Thinking.